Hello, dear students. This is your engineering mathematics three lecture. Today's topic is one-dimensional heat equation. This topic is from last unit, unit number six, applications of partial differential equation. In previous lecture, we have discussed wave equation. Now here we are going to discuss one-dimensional heat equation. Heat flows from higher temperature to lower temperature. The rate of flow of heat to an area is proportional to the area in the temperature gradient value by del T, where u x t is temperature distribution normal to the area. Constant of proportionality is called the thermal conductivity K of the material. The amount of heat required to change the temperature to the given range is proportional to the mass of the given body and the change of temperature the constant of proportionality is termed as specific heat. As consider a homogeneous bar of uniform cross section. Sides are insulated. It is assumed that the loss of heat from the sides by conduction or radiation is negligible. One end of the bar treated as the origin and the direction of heat flows as positive x axis. Let rho be the density which unit gram per centimeter cube, S the specific heat, which unit calorie per centimeter degree second. The temperature at any point of the bar depend on the distance x of the point from one end, one end at time t and is denoted by u x t. So one dimensional heat, one dimensional heat equation is given by del u by del t is equal to c square into del square u by del x square. This is the one dimensional heat equation. Yeah. See, uh, discuss, uh, discuss the uh, heat transformation here. It flows from higher temperature to lower temperature and the rate of flow of heat to an area is proportional to the area into the temperature gradient where uxp is temperature distribution normal to the area. Constant of proportionality is called here thermal conductivity, K. The amount of heat required to change the temperature to the given range is proportional to the mass of the given body and the change of temperature. The constant of proportionality is term as specific heat. So consider uh, a homogeneous bar or you may say rod. Consider a homogeneous rod of uniform cross section. Sides are insulated. It is assumed that the loss of heat from the sites by con conduction or radiation is negligible. One end of the bar is treated as the origin and the direction of heat flow as positive expected. Let rho be the density, S the specific heat. Then the temperature at any point of the bar depends on the distance x of the point from one end at time t and is denoted by u x t. Okay. And so the one dimensional heat equation is given by del u by del t is equal to c square into del square u by del x square. Where c square is equal to k upon s into rho is diffusivity of the material of the bar. C square is the diffusivity of the material of the bar. Where c square is k upon s into rho. So solution of heat equation. Now, what is the most suitable solution of one dimensional heat equation? It is u x u of x t is equal to c4 cos mx plus c5 sin mx bracket complete into e raised to minus c square m square t e raised to minus c square m square t here here x is related to the distance of the bar and t is related to time so one dimensional heat flow equation here u depends on x and t this is the standard equation in place of c square, the notation may be a square, like the wave equation here. And the most suitable solution of one dimensional heat equation is u of x is equal to c4 cos mx plus c5 sin mx into e raised to minus c square m square t. Now, the example solve del u by del t is equal to c square into del square u by del x square if u is finite for all t u of 0 comma t is equal to 0 for all t, u of l comma t is equal to 0 for all t, u of x comma 0 is equal to u 0, u 
for x lies between 0 to l so again there are four conditions one the conditions are newer here the first one is u is finite for all t means that most suitable solution exists u of 0 comma t is 0 means when the distance x is 0 the value of u is 0 for all t when the distance is l when the value of x is l distance is l u of l comma t is 0 when the distance is l the function value u is 0 for all t when time is 0 then ux0 is u0 for x lies between 0 to n for l being the length of the bar is mentioned so under these conditions we are going to find the solution the given equation is a one dimensional heat equation you can easily identify because it is the standard equation so you write down the most suitable solution for the given equation is the area of xt is equal to c4 cos mx plus c5 sin mx into e raised to minus c square m square t here in a, a differential equation c square is there so in solution also we are going to write the coefficient c square e raised to minus c square m square t if here it is a square then in uh, solution also there will be a change a, e raised to minus a square m square t which it will be the change here now this equation number one is the most suitable solution for the given equation now you apply the conditions and remove the arbitrary constant here c4 c5 are the arbitrary constants uh, we are going to remove the all the arbitrary constants going to find the specific solution by applying one the condition one by one the four conditions are given the first condition u is finite for all t it is finite for all t u is finite for all t and this condition it means uh, the equation number one exists so it is automatically satisfied that equation one is automatically satisfied because we have written the uh, solution here it exists only when that u is finite okay so it is satisfied now apply the condition set what is second condition put x is equal to zero when distance at one end distance is zero uh, put x is equal to zero in equation number one u of zero t is equal to zero so put x is equal to zero in equation one u of zero comma t is equal to c4 x is zero so cos zero is one so c4 plus sine zero is zero e raised to minus c square m square t okay and so here u of zero comma t is equal to c4 into e raised to minus c square m square t this is after putting x is equal to 0 this is the term now you know that u of 0 comma t is 0 so put u, u of 0 comma t is, zero, is equal to 0 so 0 is equal to c4 into e raised to minus c square m square t now this product is 0 it means at least one of them is 0 that's why the product is 0 so can we say e raised to minus c square m square t is 0 if we put e raised to minus c square m square t is equal to 0 in equation number 1 what will happen u of x will be 0 so it is uh, not possible so can we say c4 is 0 if we put c4 is equal to 0 in equation number 1 that first term will be 0 the remaining terms will be non zero so it is possible so c4 is 0 so after applying condition 2 we have c4 is equal to 0 now put c4 is equal to 0 in equation number 1 so u of x t is equal to c4 0 first term absent so c5 sin mx into e raised to minus c square m square t this is the solution next latest solution equation number two is the latest solution after the removing c4 now apply condition three so what is condition three here condition three is u of l comma t is zero this you put x is equal to l put x is equal to l in equation number two yeah. you put x is equal to l then it is u of l t is equal to c5 sin ml x is l so sin mx will be sin ml into e raised to minus c square m square t now u of lt is equal to 0 because of third condition so put lhs is equal to 0 u of lt is 0 is equal to c5 sin ml into e raised to minus c square m square t is 0 now this product is 0 means at least one of the term is 0 that's why the product is 0 so can we say c5 is 0 you see equation latest solution is equation number two. can we say c5 is 0 in equation number two you put c5 is equal to 0 the complete solution will be 0 that u of x will be 0 so it is not possible c5 is not equal to 0 
can we say e raised to minus c square m square t is zero? If we put e raised to minus c square m square t in equation number two, it is equal to zero. Then the complete solution will be zero. So it is also not possible that e raised to minus c square m square t is not equal to zero. So only term is here sine m. Can we say sine m is zero? Sine function it may be zero at when x is l. So for this particular value m l, sine function may be zero. So this is possible. So right here sine m is zero. Okay. Now we know that sine n pi is also zero. So we can compare this sine m l with sine n pi. So angles are equal. That's why the functions are uh, values are equal. Sine m l is equal to sine n pi. So m l is equal to n pi. Where n varies from one to three. So, so m is equal to n pi upon. N. So this is the value of n after applying the condition here. Third condition. Uh, the value of n n pi upon n. Now put n m is equal to n pi upon l in equation number two because equation number two is the latest solution. After removing C four, equation number two is the latest solution. Now put m is equal to n pi upon n. So the solution will be u of x is equal to c five sine n pi x upon l into e raised to minus c square n square pi square upon x square into c. After putting m is equal to pi upon n, your solution is now u of x is equal to c five into sine n pi x upon l into e raised to minus c square n square pi square t upon l square. N varies from one to three. Now here, taking n is equal to one, two, three, and varying the constant c five, varying the constant c five, we can take the general solution as taking n is equal to one, two, three, and varying the constant c five, arbitrary constant c five, we can take the general solution as v of x is equal to summation. We are replacing c five by b n constant summation b n sin n pi x upon l into e raised to minus c square n square pi square t upon l square. And what is from one to infinity? This is equation number two. Okay, this is the latest solution now. If I use replace by the constant b n, because for every value of n is equal to one to three, we are going to change c five, and the c five will be b one b two b three in this form. So replace c five by b n. So this is equation number three is the your latest solution after applying condition three. Okay, now apply condition four. What is condition four? U of x comma zero is p u zero. An example, see what is the fourth condition. U of x comma zero is u zero when x lies between zero and ten. Means the value of t is zero. Then function is u naught u zero. Means that it's zero. So apply that condition four. So u of x comma zero is u zero. If t is equal to zero, here equation number three. T is zero, so u x zero is equal to summation b n sine n pi x upon l. That t is zero, so e raised to Zero. Here to zero is one. So the exponential function is value is one. So your term is u of x comma zero is equal to summation b n sine n pi x upon l and varies from one to infinity. Now what is u x zero? U x zero is u naught. U is of this zero. So put u x zero is equal to u zero. U zero is equal to summation b n sine n pi x upon l and varies from one to infinity. Okay. Now how to find the value of b n? See what is this term? U naught is equal to summation b n sine n pi x upon l n varies from one to infinity. One to infinity. It is nothing but half range Fourier Fourier half range sine series for u u of x comma zero means for u naught where function f of x is u naught in in the interval zero to l. So the formula to find the value of b n is here by half range sine series. Is equal to two upon l into integration or zero to l f of x sine n pi x upon l into b x. This is the formula of half length sine series. Now b n is equal to two upon l integration or zero to l because your interval is x lies between zero to l. So zero to l. What is your function f of x? It is u of x comma zero. What is your u of x comma zero? It is u zero sine n pi x upon l b x. So you put here u of x zero is nothing but your u of zero. Okay. Now u of zero is constant term, so we can write it outside the integral. So two u of zero upon l inside the integral. Integration of sine function is minus cos minus cos n pi x upon l upon n pi upon l because the constant coefficient of x is here n pi upon l. So in denominator we write the coefficient n pi upon l and the limits zero to l. Now when we put upper limit l, 
steps while solving the heat flow equation one dimensional heat flow equation heat equation uh, after the applying uh, first condition first condition is automatically satisfied because uh, we have used the most suitable solution so that condition is automatically satisfied after applying second condition c4 is always zero and after uh, getting c4 is equal to zero we have the equation number 2 which is the latest solution when we apply condition number 3 uh, when we apply condition number 3 then we have the value of m it is n pi upon n we will get the value of m after getting m you uh, again you will get a new solution that is your equation number 3 after finding uh, the latest solution in the form of equation number 3 you apply the condition 4 and after applying uh, condition 4 uh, you have to find out you will get a half range sign series and you have to find out the coefficient dm it is a lengthy process. Up to equation number three, you can write easily the solution because the steps are same for one dimensional heat equation up to equation number three. So up to three uh, equation number three, you will get the half mark for the example. So you remember the steps and you solve the example of this coequation. So here the second topic, one dimensional heat equation, this equation is also over here. The station is also over here. Thank you.